Hi, welcome to Messier Mantra. I'm your host, Mike Messier. On this episode, I'm happy to welcome a very good friend of mine. Her name is Corinne Southern. She's an actress, and she's also a burlesque performer, and I call it a burlesque organizer. Hey, Corinne, how's it going? Hi, good to be here. I said burlesque organizer, because beyond uh, performance, you kind of put the show, you're a promoter, put the shows yeah. together, organizer. What title would you call that? Well, I'm a producer. So, there you go. Yeah, I fell into burlesque about 2007. I started performing, and I found that there was really a hole in the Providence burlesque scene, and there weren't many shows. There were some shows, but not many. Um, and I really established a couple shows in Providence. I've been very proud. They've taken off, and it's kind of snowballed from there. It's really exciting. How did you get interested in the art of burlesque? I would say it actually started when I was a kid, funny enough. Um, my mom um, showed me Gypsy when I was a kid, and I always loved the costumes, and I loved the uh, pageantry. And then when I was a teenager, I started working at a lingerie store. Um, and I was always a theatrical person, so all of that kind of combined. And I was working in banking, right. and I had just graduated high school, and I was an artistic person with no artistic outlet. So I found um, a dance company that was doing something similar. They were doing cabaret, and they were doing um, acrobatic pole dancing. Wow. And when I ended up coming on with her, she hired me, and I said, hey, what about burlesque? And here I am several years later, and it's my number one job. So. You produce the shows, you perform in the shows. Uh, you know, I've talked a little bit, and it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. It's more than I ever thought it would be, because being a burlesque producer, I also end up being a graphic designer, right. and I'm a promoter, and I'm a stripper wrangler, dancer wrangler. Um, there's a lot of interpersonal stuff. I help book things. I design artistic concepts for the show. So it's a lot of work. And not only that, but then I perform in my own shows. And so it's kind of like being the boss and being an employee all at the same time. <laughs> so you show up to these events, um, nightclubs throughout Providence and Massachusetts, other areas, and you've got to just be on your game because not only do you have to organize and produce the show, you have to wrangle the other performers, and mm -hmm. then 10, 20 minutes later, or whatever, you have to get on stage too. Yeah, I've gotten a lot better at it. It used to be very stressful, and it's funny because every time I do a show, I feel like it gets a little bit easier and a little bit more fun and a little bit, you know, better. That's awesome. Yeah. And um, you were telling me about a new group Shakespeare erotica? Did I yeah. say it right? Yeah, <laughs> so close. Shakespeare erotica. Shakespeare erotica, that's cool. Um, two lovely performers that I'm really close friends with, Gilted Lily and Serious Bitness from Rhode Island, went to college with me, and we all have been performing together. They've been doing the shows that I've been producing, and we sort of got this wacky idea to combine Shakespeare and burlesque in a troupe that actually will continue to produce Shakespeare-themed burlesque shows. Um, Shakespeare and burlesque has been hand in hand for a long time. Since the days of, um, you know, when burlesque started in the 1800s, they did burlesques of Shakespeare's plays. Um, so it's really exciting for us to continue that tradition, and I'm very excited about it. Bringing it back to its roots. Yeah. And exactly. I think, like, some of these shows, just my own imagination, Romeo and Juliet. Uh, sure. You know, yeah. that would probably lend itself to this type of... Uh, sure, yeah, you know. we're really excited. We have a couple of Scottish play acts in the works and some Midsummer Night's Dream acts. And Shakespeare, um, he was body, for sure, a body bard. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, what other show? Hamlet would be intense. I don't know. Would that Abs work? Absolutely, the... yeah. We are going to leave no stone unturned. We're hoping to hit all of his works, including sonnets and things like that. We would love for Shakespeare Erotica to be around long after we're gone. So, well, that's yeah. a long time away. Don't get long, ahead of yourself. Long time, but <laughs> we would love, you know, we would love to build that foundation. <laughs> we would love, you know, for other people to keep it going. So. And then did you say July 9th at Aurora Club? Actually, July 7th. July 7th. We have um, our opening night. It's our Shakespeare Erotica. We're doing a summer tour of New England. So it'll be our first show. It's kind of a variety Shakespeare show. July 7th. Is that a Saturday night or a Friday night? Oh, I want to say it's a f Thursday night. Okay. I okay. believe. Yeah. I believe. I keep my schedule in my my phone. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, people get out their calendar. July yeah. 7th. Yeah, uh, I just believe Just after so. 4th of July. 
so people can yeah uh, the day before up. my birthday so bring presents oh it's great <laughs> <laughs> there'll probably be some people that will you know? i hope so <laughs> <laughs> now let's talk about we'll switch gears a little bit talk about um, your acting too because yeah. uh we're both kind of alumni of Rhode Island College, and you are a theater major. I got a bachelor's yeah. in theater, is that right? Yeah, I graduated last May, um, so it's been about a year. Yeah. And I waited a little bit between high school and college to go to college, so best decision I ever made. I had a great education at Rhode Island College. Um, being a theater major is hard work. I think you either have it in you or you don't, but right. I did well in school, and I actually just got to compete at NETC's, the New England Theater Conference, where they have the Irene Ryan Acting Scholarships. I just did that a couple months ago for Tell a show about. that I was in. Oh, well, it's a, it's a big conference. It's at sponsored by the Kennedy Center and you if you're in a play in college which I was my final year of college I did a number of plays in college but this particular play was Dead Man's Cell Phone and I was nominated to go to the NETC's and perform some um, monologues for them and some I took my friend as a scene partner and we made it through one round but we took a lot of workshops and met a lot of interesting people and did a lot of promoting for our burlesque business which you know they kind of go hand in hand all performances performance so it's so very exciting. It was a lot of fun and you know it's exciting to be around a lot of people that are passionate about theater, passionate about something you're passionate about. And the conferences in DC? We they have a big conference in DC. Mm -hmm. The one I went to was just a regional conference, so we were in Connecticut. Okay. Um, but it was a great, it was a brand new theater building. So that was really nice to see new theaters being made. Gorgeous spaces. And I saw some of your work at that Howard Fine workshop which was uh, tremendous that was hands down one of the most spectacular experiences of my college career um howard fine is an acting teacher from la and he studied with stella adler and all those uh or uda hagen rather was his big inspiration uda hagen um and he wrote a book and they selected about 20 students to participate in this weekend intensive and it was intense yes um because we prepared for months ahead of time um and my scene partner the talented rachel perry was spectacular but we prepared for a few months and then we did a, the first day, and he just tore everything we did down. Yeah, <laughs> we yeah, were yeah. like, oh, we thought we did so good. We were, I was ready for him to be like, you are the next Meryl Streep. Come to right, Hollywood right, with right. me. And so I, the first day was rough. And then the second day, um, we came in with really what he had told us to focus on. And it, it was incredible. And even just watching him teach other people right. was informative. So, so basically what happened was it was in a Rhode Island College campus. Yep. And it was in one of the uh, theater, you know, rooms, yeah. performance space. Yep. And so there was bleachers for people like myself to kind of audit and watch the experience. Mm -hmm. And uh, a previous mantra guest, Steve Feinberg from the Rhode Island Film and Television Office, he stepped in to watch. There were some, you know, yeah. dignitaries of sorts to watch this experience. But yeah. for the students, yourself included, uh, you came in, I think, on a Thursday, maybe, mm -hmm. and performed your scene. And like you were saying, Howard Fine, this renowned acting coach, just tore it apart. Yeah. Well, and he's you the know. sort of guy who's like, hey, my friend Will Smith, right. my friend Brad Pitt. And I'm like, wow. And it's all true, too. A little too. starstruck. Like. Right. And not just friends, but these are people he's coached in acting. Yeah. So you're working with a guy yeah. for this two-day workshop that's just tremendous. What I found very interesting, too, about uh, the Fine workshop in Rhode Island is that you had a... I believe you had a go-between day. Like you had your day, right? Mm -hmm. Am I correct on this? Like you had your performance day and then an off day, and then the second day to fine tune um, it? Am I right on that? I can't remember. Jeez, it's been a year. Yeah, I think I, I think I recall <laughs> I think there that. There might was have a been a day in between. There was definitely right. time for us to take into consideration his suggestions. Right. And Howard Fine is all about creating the place that you're in and making it as real for you as possible. And that was definitely a break from what I did because a lot of the theater that I do, it's really minimal set, really right. minimal clothing. It's a lot of imagination. So to, to step into a world that's a little bit more focused on film um, and a little bit more focused in reality was really exciting. Yes. Um, definitely a part of my education that until that point I hadn't really gotten to explore. Right. So we, and it was funny because my friend Rachel, who was my scene partner, we were doing um, a scene from Proof. Okay. And she actually, in, in the scene, she was supposed to have, um, we're, we're all grieving over the loss of our father, who was insane. And she, um, 
she had to take a shower and then the scene began after her shower when we started interacting and I was playing her sister. Right. Um, so she actually spent the night at my house the night before the second time and we she took a shower the next morning and before we went to the workshop she came out of the shower and we did the scene and we tried to make it as real and as grounded as possible and I think it made a huge difference. Yeah, that was that was great. I do remember it. I remember you guys doing awesome and um, like this guy Howard Fine, he actually was a Rhode Island person too. I don't know if you knew yeah. that, but he yeah, went to I the did. same school, Rhode Island College, and then he went out to Hollywood. Yeah, well, I read the book. So. Yeah, the fine <laughs> on acting. Yeah, tremendous. And uh, what are some of your own techniques uh, for the straight out acting that uh, you might want to share? Like when you get assigned a scene, uh, how do you break it down as far as the memorization either in the words mm. or the character development? Is there a pattern that you have? Um, I think for me the most important thing is intention. Right. So if I, I read a script and I'll read it and read it and read it again and again and again until I know why my character would be doing what I'm doing. And I find that person in myself. And that when you do something like that, you don't really have to worry so much about memorizing your words because you know what you're trying to say, you know what's going to happen, you know what your motivation for saying those things are, so the words just come. They're just there. Because you couldn't you wouldn't say anything else. Right. You know, so it's about how close can you find yourself in it. That's nice. what's easiest for me. Nice. And how do you um, apply these scene study? Uh, techniques to the burlesque because I'm kind of what I'm really interested mm -hmm. in also is as a actress yeah. or actor whatever you prefer to burlesque performer and uh, producer that correlation is there any similarities mm -hmm. differences um, I would say burlesque is definitely acting all of the best burlesque performers are actors it's a lot of expression in your face um, so often you'll find a particular mood or you'll be inspired by a particular character that you're making fun of. Um, so, so you, and different performers have different launching off points. So sometimes I will launch from a, a song I really like and that song will already give me a mood for a piece. And then I find a cost, or maybe I have a costume piece I like. Um, my, my good friend, Michelle the Kitten, just gave me a bunch of fur coats from her mom and her nice. grandma that they don't need anymore. It was a fur with weasels. There's like weasel faces. I can't wait to use it in an act. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. But. Sure, so, and pop then, goes weasel or something, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> you're right on the ball, nice there you go. Right. Yeah, <laughs> write that down, file that for later. Um, but. If in terms of acting um, and the acting process, I, I think a lot of it is just about finding a strong emotion to ground yourself in and to tell a story. Because a burlesque piece really is just telling a story. Um, and you're instead of taking an hour and a half to do it like you would in a play, you tell it in five minutes. Right. So, and I, not all burlesque is sexy. I've seen some very serious burlesque. I saw a performer do uh, Jacqueline Kennedy immediately following the JFK assassination. Wow. And I cried. And I've seen performers do very moving pieces about uh, body image and things like that. So it's, it's, and then I've seen performers, you know, do funny acts where they're pulling things out of cows. And, you know, the, the sky really is the limit, which is, it's exciting. It really lets my um, imagination run wild. Are there different um, burlesque styles from different countries? I'm just curious. Yeah, I mean, a burlesque sort of, uh, t the word burlesque means to make fun of. Okay. So burlesque really absorbs anything that comes around it basically. Um, there's a lot of Middle Eastern dance, Asian dance, belly dance involved in burlesque, or you'll see jazz dance, which is super American. You'll see modern dance, you'll see fan dancing, um, you know, it, it's really broad. Wasn't there, um, I'm uh, drawing a blank on her name, an African American uh, lady who did burlesque? She did something with bananas, like a, like a banana skirt or something. Yeah, she, um, Josephine Baker. Yes, yeah, Josephine Baker, and she, especially right now, um, race and burlesque is really a hot bush, button issue, and there's a lot. Race in our country is a hot button issue right, right. now, and burlesque is not immune to that. So, women like Josephine Baker, I mean, she was. She kind of played into the racial stereotypes with the bananas and things like that, but at the same time, like she rose above it because 
when you take something and you make it a joke, then you take power over it. Right. Um, you know, all of the greats, none of them really took themselves too seriously. I was remembering there was a film about her life, and that's kind of how the she film was spectacular, started. Yeah. yeah. I've had the honor of meeting uh, Tony Elling, and she performed, she was one of the first black burlesque performers, and she performed in Japan, and she had a personal relationship with Duke Ellington, and mm. she's just a wild, really cool lady. Um, and I've got, I've got to meet a lot of the legends of burlesque, which is a lot of fun, because burlesque is kind of like country music. We don't throw our stars out when they're too old. So if you, if you become famous in burlesque, you can have a long career in burlesque, at burlesque events and promoting burlesque. And we call them the legends. And nice. there's competitions now that the legends vote for their favorite new burlesque performers. And Tell me about some of the legends you've met. Um, I've met Kitten Natividad, who is spectacular. She's like one of my best Facebook friends. Now. There you go. Yeah, she, yeah. She's so adorable and she was two-time Miss Nude Universe 1970 and 1971. Sure. Uh, she did a bunch of those Russ Myers films. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Beneath the Valley of the Ultra Vixens was probably one of the ones she's most famous for. Okay. Um, I've met April March. Um, yeah, it's just it's really exciting. I met Jenny Evans when she was still around and these, these are at conventions or conferences? Um, or I met most of these women in Boston. They have a big Great Burlesque Exposition every year. They just did their 10th year. Um, and for the past couple years, my, my good friend Scratch and the Boston Beauties, they do that show. So I've been helping them out with that. I went on tour with them when I first started Burlesque. And we've kind of remained a nice working relationship they produce in Boston. Now what's the name of, because you during the Shakespeare group, coming up, but is there other group titles that you produce now, like names of the groups? Or? Not really. Shakespeareotica um, is the big one that we have as a troupe. Right. I, uh, some burlesque performers will perform in troops, but I kind of prefer to be the head of an, an anonymous collective. Right. Um, I tend to work with the performers that I work with more than once if I like them. Right. Um, but I, we're not in a troupe per se. So right now I run a monthly show which is called Aurora After Dark at Aurora Providence. And that's generally at the end of the month, um, usually the fourth Wednesday, but sometimes it skips around if we have to. Um, and that's kind of like a variety burlesque show. So you'll see everything from really classic, classic burlesque to um, a little bit more modern burlesque, um, maybe, you know, Horror burlesque, which is that sounds blood pretty exciting. and guts and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, that sounds pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. that, it does sound pretty cool, actually. Yeah. yeah. Now, is there the, with the fans, the audience members, are these people that maybe come in once in a while? Are they like pretty regulars? I'm just kind of curious. We have a loyal following. I mean, every every so often we'll get you know newbies, of course, or people that have never been to burlesque shows. But I found that once somebody comes to one of my shows, they want to come back. Right, right, right. Um, yeah. And we have just a solid group of people who even promote my shows for me without me asking them. It's a producer's dream. That's great. That's yeah. great. When you're working, um, when you're organizing these shows, what type of obstacles come up with either the locations or the performers you're promoting, or is there any type of, or the fans, is there any type of uh, situations where you're like, ah, this is frustrating? You know, I'm just kind of curious. It's funny because you don't really think, I, I don't like to put myself into a place where I'm anticipating problems. Right. I try to put myself in a place where I know that everything's gonna go okay, and usually it does, but um, I have, I've had, some issues negotiating with venues. Um, and luckily, my new venue, Aurora, they've been wonderful to me. Um, but sometimes, you know, I've shown up and maybe the venue isn't as they describe it to right. me. Or they, they tell me they'll have lights and they have like disco lights, not actual lights that'll show light on dancers. Or they'll tell me they have a place to change, but it's a broom closet or a bathroom right, right, <laughs> with right. like a public bathroom that people can come in and you know, you're changing into your thousand dollar costume right, in this public right, right. bathroom. Um, or, you know, I've I've had, uh, we had the plumbing go on our venue once, one, it, it was, this was last year. Right. It was a few, few day, a few hours before our show, and I got a phone call saying that we had to cancel immediately. Um, That's frustrating for you as a producer because you've organized these events and. Yeah. Probably ninety percent of the time everything goes right, but that ten percent that it doesn't, it's very yeah. frustrating. I imagine. I, I guess it's just part of the job, you know, yeah. and you learn to. 
you learn to cover yourself a little bit more. Like I've learned that paperwork and email trails and things like that are really your best friend. Um, and it's also, I think, made me a better performer because I know what a producer's looking for. And I will tell you all that talent is probably only 50% of it. Yeah, you want someone talented, but more than anything, what I want is somebody who's reliable, who answers their emails, who I know is gonna show up on time with what they say that they're going to do. I want honesty, integrity, and communication. And I think that being a producer has made me better at all of those things, and knowing what sort of materials a producer would be looking for. Um, because when I first started performing burlesque, I'd sit there going, why is this producer hounding me for music? Right. They know I'm going to get it to them. And now being on the other end of that, you know, I really see why they were hounding me. And now I make sure nobody has to hound me. Because <laughs> you've got a double and triple check as the producer. You've got yeah. so many people. And it's just a lot of moving parts. I, try and, I sometimes say it's like stapling jello to a wall. <laughs> wow! Because when you try, it just falls down and you pick it up. Yeah. You just end up with a staple in your thumb or something. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. Very interesting, yeah. Now, have you thought about, because uh, you are New England based now, but have you thought about, hey, I'd like to try this uh, burlesque scene, uh, the, the troupe, uh, not the troupe, but yeah. the scene uh, in California, because I imagine California and Los Angeles has a big thing. Um, Tyrana Soares actually was a performer from this area who's now in a troupe out in California, and I know some producers out in California um, who are really really great people that I've met, because the burlesque community is ultimately quite small right. um, on an international scale, really, mm. the, especially the people who are doing it professionally. There's, a, there's some more amateurs than there are real professionals, and um, you know, I would say I'm falling somewhere between the book and the big rooms and being an amateur, so I'm, I'm, but I'm working my way up the ladder. What's the learning curve or... Um you know, I know some of the stuff, there's gray zones and stuff, I would imagine, but to go from amateur to professional, what kind of um, education, not, you know, I mean, not a formal, what lessons or what parameters mm -hmm. would you say that to get to that higher level are? Um, a lot of it is just experience, mm -hmm. knowing how to work a crowd. Um, because you are, there's, there's all sorts of different types of bodies in burlesque, but you do want to have a healthy body. You do want to have a particular aesthetic and image that you've cultivated. Um, you want to have a professional reputation. And then it really comes down to your costumes and your act development. Um, I can always tell a newer burlesque performer because they have tags sticking out, oh, wow. or maybe they didn't make their costume or have it made for them. Um, you know, maybe they went to Victoria's Secret or something and bought something and glued a few plastic rhinestones to it. So you can just definitely tell um, who's been at it a little bit longer. You can tell by the makeup. Like, the more makeup you have on, the longer you've probably been doing for last. Oh, right, sure. Wow. Yeah, but... it reminds me a little bit of, um, you know, a scene of professional wrestling and, and how there's local... Totally. You know, yeah, there's, like, local organizations, and some of those guys from the local leagues will get bigger and bigger and go to, you know, NXT and WWE and all those... You know, higher mm -hmm. end, and, and but some some performers, some wrestlers are just more content with being a mm -hmm. weekend warrior type of person. Like, hey, I'm going to do this wrestling on the weekend, you know, two or three times a month, but I've got a day job yeah. and a family and stuff. So it really depends. Sometimes what people put into it is what they can get. That's exactly it. And I, my good friend Bella, who is a professional full-time performer, and she she's toured all over. Um, she just did the Game of Thrones burlesque tour with her partner Xander, uh, tour partner, and a couple of Moxie Labouche from. They're down from D.C., and they did the Game of Thrones burlesque tour last summer. And she keeps she's on me to like start touring more and really going to different cities and hustling a little bit more than I do. And sometimes I I think I might be a little too nice um, okay. I, it, it's so I'm still learning how to sell myself in that way to just be able to call a producer up and say hey I'm Korean you should hire me <laughs> when you say that do you mean too nice as in not not aggressive enough okay I guess with saying hey you should I want to come to see you and this is how much you should pay me because right. it, any art artist any working artist it's always walking that fine line between creating art and creating a living. Right. So, yeah. We've talked about that with a film friend of mine on one of the last episodes is 
you want to be involved and you do want to get paid, but then like you don't want to mm -hmm. shove it down somebody's throat because there might, even for an unpaid opportunity, there might be something that leads down the path to bigger mm -hmm. things. It's, it can be very uh, confusing and there is no rule book to mm -hmm. entertainment in general. There's no, you know, uh, biblical verses that are going to tell you how to do things. You just kind of have to learn on your own and maybe get some life lessons from mentors or people you just meet. And because it's all, it's such a DIY community that there's not, I would say even some of the more professional and popular burlesque performers don't necessarily have an agent or something, a manager. So it can be a lot sometimes just to even organize your schedule and organize your life. And you don't want to price yourself out of a job when someone says, well, what's your rate? And you right. want to get, you want to get the most possible because I know how much time I put into my work. I spend... 24-7 doing this. I'm putting in way more than 80 hours a week, right. you know, on my craft. Right now I've been rhinestoning an exercise bike, and that takes way longer than you would think it does. For, uh, the bike goes on the stage. Yeah, it's, oh, it's wow. going to be a set piece for an act I'm working on. Nice. Um, but, you know, just even the time, I've, I've probably, I'm not even half done, right. and I think at this point I've put in at least 12 hours just gluing rhinestones onto this bike. And you do it an hour at a time, but I, I know what my time is worth. So sometimes it's difficult. And you know, sometimes I have to say, hey, I'm not going to, especially because what I do is semi nude, right. I'm not going to show you my body for $30. Like, right. they, 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 not when I'm wearing a costume uh, that I've put a lot of time and effort into and money and not when I've rehearsed, and not when I've gotten the education to be a professional performer. So there, there is a line there. But I can honestly say that at this point in my life, I'm able to support myself full time, um, you know, with the aid of, of course, the people that I live with, but I'm able to support myself um, as a full time performer between acting and singing, and I do a little modeling here and there, or a little bit. I'll do singing telegrams, or burlesque telegrams, or hula shows, or so. Am I, am I making my million dollar movies or doing my big budget burlesque show? Not yet, but I'm on my way. You and I work together in a fun troupe called uh, Murder on Us Dinner Theater. Yeah. That's always fun. You know, we go to these uh, venues, whether it's a downtown Providence restaurant, our director friend, John Thayer book some pretty interesting venues, whether it's in Cranston or by the water or Massachusetts, mm. so that's fun too. I love improv and I love sketch comedy and that sort of stuff, so it's been really fun working with Murder on Us because I like immersive theater. I like being able to make a connection because I, I find that in burlesque, um, there's more of a connection with the audience, and I'm also getting that from Murder on Us. You're making a direct connection with every single person that's at the show. Right. So that's exciting. And yeah. I like to make people laugh. I'm kind of funny. So. Uh, definitely, definitely. <laughs> and uh, there is, uh, the Messy Mantra is all about, at the end of the show, we ask our guests, do you have a mantra? Do you have something, a few words of wisdom for the audience, or mantras that you think about your own life type of thing? Is there any mantra you'd like to share? Everything is always working out for me. In the moment, you might seem a little bit stressed out, or you might be a little pressed for time, right. or you know something might go wrong. You might pop a pasty, or who knows? <laughs> um, but everything in life is always going to work out for you. It's always worked out before. It's always going to work out in the end, and you just really have to keep a positive attitude. So, Corinne Southern, thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks to our special guest, Corinne Southern, on this episode of Messier Mantra. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.